Not going to lie, one of the trickiest things in factoring is this thing that teachers sometimes call decomposition. Decomposition is just the method we use when we're trying to factor something that isn't an easy case. Remember, the easy case was when you just have a bare x squared out front. Ew, no. It's not just x squared out front. There's a 2 there. Well, that's crap. I guess we're going to have to use decomposition. Here's how it works. You need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 24. In this case, it's negative 24 because 2 times negative 12 give you that number. In this case, it's negative 24. If you're trying to factor a different expression in your work right now, multiply that first number by the last number. That's what your two numbers are going to have to multiply to. They're going to have to add to, in my case, positive 5. You'll use whatever your middle number is. I need to find those two numbers. Numbers that multiply to 24. 1 and 24, those don't add to 5. Uh, 2 and 12, those don't add to 5. 3 and 8, uh, the difference between those is 5. Maybe we can do something with that. 3 and 8 multiply to positive 24. We want negative 24. Let's make one of them negative. Do they add to positive 5? Negative 3 and positive 8 do add to positive 5. And they multiply to negative 24. Cool. These are our two numbers. What are your two numbers? You can take some time to figure that out now. Once you have your two numbers, here's what you got to do. Rewrite your first and last terms, not the middle one. Here's what happens. The middle one breaks apart or decomposes into two other terms. In our case, minus 3 and plus 8. Minus 3x plus 8x. Negative 3x plus 8x, if you were to simplify that, it would give you your positive 5x. So these two are exactly the same thing, except we've broken this apart into two. We've made it more complicated so that we can do this method. Step two, take your first two terms. Is there anything common to both of those? In this case, two and three. No numbers divide into both of those. Two x's, because there's an x squared and an x here. Oh, there's an x in both of them. When I take an x out of both of these terms, what am I left with? Here, I'm left with a two. And there were two x's. It was x squared. So there's one x left over. Here, I'm left with our minus 3. And that x already got taken out. So that's it. In fact, if you multiply this out, x times 2x gives 2x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Awesome. Let's do it over here, too. Can we pull anything out of both of those? 8 and 12. Those are both divisible by 4. Cool. When I pull 4 out, I'm left with 8 divided by 4 is 2. And there's an x, because I haven't pulled the x out. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Again, I've just taken out what I could from the first two terms and the last two terms. You will always find, if you're doing this properly, that the terms in the brackets will be the same. 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. Looks like we're good to go. Now, is there anything common to this term and this term? Of course there is. We just checked. There's a 2x minus 3. If you pull that out, what are you left with? Here, you pull out the 2x minus 3, you're left with an x. Here you pull out the 2x minus 3, you're left with a plus 4. And that, my friends, is your factored expression. Decomposition. Slightly complicated method to factor something. 
but it involves breaking up your f middle term into two of them, factoring the first two and last two, and then seeing what's in the brackets and pulling that out of both the terms that you're left with. It takes practice, but once you practice it four or five times, you'll get the rhythm and you'll be good to go on a test. Best of luck.